I've been talking about these trad wives and these trad wife influencers are completely different. Some of these people are literally grifters making money. Enter into the picture this woman, Tiffany Willis, and she was featured in the Detroit Free Press back in 2022. She had a whole write-up about her. Southfield housewife believes women should stay home. She's also a wife school coach selling classes on how to be a housewife. One of the femininity coach grifters. So it's like there is um, the people that are out here making money off of this lifestyle and being an influencer. And there are actual trad wives who aren't making any money. And then there are people that are watching these videos, the glammed up videos with the, the women with the aprons. They're like, I want to do that. Um, making the traditional wife lifestyle look glamorous. So let's talk about Tiffany. Tiffany Willis wakes up every morning between 5.30 and 6 a.m. in the Southfield home she, sell, she shares with her husband of six years. There is no chatter of children getting ready for school. There's no job waiting for her to punch in. Instead, she gets up to hang out with her husband, Lamar Willis. Keep that name in mind, Lamar Willis. And to do everything to meet his every daily need. She has prepared his lunch the night before, laid out his clothes. So when he gets up, he can start his day. He can just kind of operate. All right, so here's Tiffany smiling. Look at this big smile. She just put in a batch of cookies. She is the founder of the Wifestyle Academy, where she is making money to teach you how you can be a wife. She coaches women on how to tap into their feminine side, setting boundaries, and embracing their womanhood. Now, I have ironed clothes before, but I have never ironed them with such glee. <laughs> Here she is ironing her husband, Lamar Willis's clothes. Willis, who's 36, is a housewife. In fact, she says she is a proud housewife, and she understands that her path is not for everyone, and that some people cringe at the word housewife and the June Cleaver image of subservience that it can conjure up for many women today. In fact, she says she frequently gets pushback on her social media pages from other women, and even some men, accusing her of supporting misogyny as a woman and of erasing the progress of women that women have made over the decades. But Tiffany Willis pushes back, not in an offensive way, that what she is trying to do is not set women back. She is trying to prop them up. And she does this through her online lifestyle academy, where she seeks to teach women not only to take care of their relationship, but how to tap into their feminine energy, what she describes as the calming, peaceful presence women that makes them appealing. I'm sorry, in women that makes them appealing, alluring, nurturing, and powerful. When I tell you as a mother that peaceful and the homemaker lifestyle does not really go together, but that's coming from an actual homemaker who has stayed home with her children since the time that they were born. Peaceful is not really what comes to mind, but also maybe it's because I don't have the apron. At the Wife Style Academy, Tiffany says she focuses on helping women to find their voices with her six-week feminine but firm setting boundaries like a lady digital course. After they are able to find their voice, she said women can better advocate for what she wants and needs. It just bugs me when women don't feel empowered to advocate for themselves. And contrary to one's belief, housewifery gives a woman the power to really advocate for themselves but they have to see themselves as valuable first, and then they have to protect that value. But it's not just about creating strong homes and families. It's about women claiming their voice. Tiffany says women have never been given permission to advocate for themselves, aside from the grandparents and great-grandparents era, when women were considered feminine because they were quiet and home taking care of the house and children. Tiffany says women are not even comfortable advocating for themselves in the bedroom. Now, I will say this. I have never had an issue speaking up for myself, being assertive, but it tends to get translated as being masculine. And yes, we do have women that are telling folks, telling women and girls to speak up for ourselves, have confidence, 
have some, you know, the self-esteem, be assertive, all of that. But then that just gets pushed into the realm of masculine traits. And she's talking about giving permission to advocate for ourselves. That's what feminism kind of does. It tells people that we are whole human beings and have the right to advocate for ourselves and have some agency and autonomy. So you don't really need to spend money with a coach to get this. Feminism has helped us open those doors wide open. Okay, so this is Tiffany Willis. Now let's talk a little bit about her husband, Lamar Willis. Meet Lamar. This parents speak out after a SA investigation into a former Southfield teacher. The parents said that this is very egregious. Parents whose children are involved in the case of the former Southfield public schools teacher charged with SA involving students are speaking out. Remember, I kept saying the name Lamar Willis. Okay, Lamar Willis, a once respected teacher at MacArthur University Academy K-8, through is now accused of horrible crimes against students. Willis is charged with four counts of second-degree criminal SE actual conduct and three counts of accosting a minor for immoral purposes. He was arranged, I mean, I'm sorry, he was arraigned earlier this month and given a $15,000 personal bond. I was upset. I was highly upset. And I was concerned about, you know, my kids and my kids' friends and all of the kids in the school. After working for Southfield Public Schools for years, 41 year old Willis resigned over the summer. As the investigation into his behavior with students intensified, students told Lathrop Village Police investigators that Willis would make girls sit on his lap just about every day. They also alleged he would even force some students into engaging in se actual activity with each other. And if they didn't go far enough, he allegedly told them to leave his classroom. You start talking about things like, you know, how to have SEX and how to show different types of um, of pleasure. And it's kind of like, whoa. And the kids all classified it as weird. That's what another parent named Felicia said. It's hard for me to believe that no one had any knowledge because when I talked to my student, it was a running joke in the school that he was a Frito. Felicia said there was an incident between her son and Willis that led to the investigation. She said that Willis lost it when her son accidentally knocked over a lamp. He went off. He went to grab him. My son deflected him and it became like this big old altercation. My son immediately grabbed his things and left the classroom to go get the principal and the assistant principal. But the kids were very startled by his display of aggression. And that's really what sparked everyone to starting to talk like, hey, what do you think about Mr. Willis? Like something's up with him. The parents say they are thankful that the children spoke up and hope others do if they are ever in the situation where they feel uncomfortable. It was just very egregious, like it was very, very upsetting. But all you can do at this point is move forward with the young ladies. My heart goes out to them and their families. That is horrible. Once again, this is Lamar Willis. Then we got Lamar and his housewife, his feminine housewife, who is jokingly and laughingly ironing his clothes and chatting with him and waking up at 530 in the morning to make sure he is set out on his day. And he still goes out here and is doing things. Now, imagine, has she not had an income? Because yes, she is an influencer. So she is making money. So this just goes to show the other girlies do not simply rely solely on the income of one person. Because if he goes down for being like this, then you go down too, because you don't have a plan B. So don't be like other people that are going into this blind and completely trusting because you never know. My video yesterday talking about the risk of being a trad wife got the girlies talking. So I'm going to read to you some of the comments. So daughter of Diogenes says, in my experience, being a trad wife turned me into a slave. I worked for room and board 24 seven and was expected to give, to give SEX to the master or else he would get moody and mean and stop helping with anything in any way. It didn't even matter that we talked long and hard about it and what the expectations for both of us were. I never agreed to do 75% of the housework when I agreed to be a stay-at-home mom because I was homeschooling two neurodivergent kids and trying to start a home business. 
But what I realized is that he was willing to promise anything without ever having the intention to follow through. He didn't even do any of the yard work or fix up the house. He just sat and played video games most days and created more of a mess in every room than I have ever experienced before. He truly believed that since he brought in a paycheck, he didn't have to do anything else. And all of the money was his that I had to ask if I needed anything, usually being told no. Never mind the power gets cut, never mind the power gets cut off and the account is always overdrawn. Not worth it. So Wicked with Words says, honestly, almost never see women in their 40s and 50s advocate for this lifestyle. These young women are going to find out. Jennifer Lewis says, I think a lot of this came from women seeing older women in their life being the mule and they don't want to age rapidly and be tired like them. They see the glamour of staying home and not the stress of work, but they don't know how to do it right, which is why they're getting surprise Pikachu faces when their hubby trades them in when hubby is bored and he leaves them broke. They don't know how to protect themselves in case things go wrong, having their own bag that doesn't count as as marital assets and continuing to have their own bag. Having a prenup, making sure their name is on investments and real estate, making sure they're in the will. All right, so you have that. But yes, these people are getting these Pikachu faces, but it's okay. I'm going to keep on talking about it because these trad wife influencers are making it seem glamorous, but reality is a lot less glamorous. And then Starry Waters says to Jennifer, yes, I was telling my husband the same thing. I think younger women see older women who have spent their lives working, demanding jobs, and then going home for their second shift, second and third shift, doing all of the housework and childcare and maybe even elder care. And these younger girls are like, no thanks. But these younger girls are not understanding that housework, homemaking is 24-7. It's work. It's just unpaid work. All right, so then Sydney says, weren't the 1950s housewives strung out and uh, addicted to opium? They left that part out. So yes, they, they had mommy's little helpers. And Marie says, what's the name of that popular diet? The one which meals were pl- replaced with a bottle of sherry a day. These women were drinking and taking meds. This woman says, I grew up seeing traditional marriages and they scared me. My aunties were miserable. My cousins were sad and worse, but we won't get into my cult leader uncle right now. I thank God I got to see that stuff and learn the red flags. It always makes me laugh when the men in my family ask why I'm not married. The women never ask. They know why I'm not, why I'm not and refuse to. All right. This person says, when I was young, me and my husband both thought we'd like the idea of this lifestyle. It lasted one year before I went back to work. It almost destroyed our relationship. We were both unhappy. I will never allow anyone to have that kind of power over me again. Never. Bianca says, the I don't want a job thing blew my mind. Housework is work. Balancing the household budget, planning meals, preparing those meals are all work. You just aren't collecting a paycheck. What's worse is that it all counts for absolutely nothing if you have to re-enter the job market. No social security points if that stays around. A combo for another day. <clears throat> no savings. No credit score. Your trad husband has a paper trail to fall back on. You have zip. Protecting yourself isn't a rejection of the trad wife lifestyle. Um, go for it. Just make sure you have a backup plan in case that get, man gets hit by a bus or something. This woman says, my grandmother told all of her daughters to have their own money. She was told not to go to college and had to get married to be a traditional wife. She did that twice and both men cheated and left her with the kids while her ex-husbands left and started new families. The traditional housewives I know are now working part-time or full-time jobs as their kids got older. They have all at one time been told by their husbands it's their money and have gotten in an argument over it. Y'all, please listen to the the folks that have experienced this. This person says the saddest the saddest thing about trad wives is how predictable it all is. Um, this person says nobody's talking about how kids growing up with a stay at home mother have almost no relationship with their breadwinner fathers because of all that breadwinning. Monica says, I'm 47. I've always had older friends so I could learn from their experiences. My good friend, now in her 70s, went through something similar 10 years ago. 
her husband passed away after a prolonged illness and the rebound from her trad wife lifestyle was not pretty. The financial aspect alone was enough, but the reality of many other of her life sacrifices were heartbreaking. Talk to older women about their experiences. It will help you avoid some of the traps and pitfalls in life. Be mindful. I don't know why women are so resistant to plan for the future. Women typically outlive the men. If you don't have a game plan, what the heck are you going to do? How are you going to survive? This woman says, always have something to fall back on. Don't ever fully depend on a man. I went through a horrible divorce and had to put myself through school and take care of my child. Always protect yourself and have something you can do to take care of yourself. And please understand that women do typically end up with kids. So if you're not going to think about yourself, please think about your kids. There were lots of comments on this post, lots and lots of comments, lots of experiences, experiences um, across the board. And we're going to keep talking about it because I want women and girls to understand that living your life and making plans and wanting to survive is perfectly okay because we are humans and we do, we should want to survive and you should not put all of your eggs and somebody else. You should think about survival for yourself and your children. Jump in the comments. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to like, comment, share.